This is an American-made Fendra Ultralux Stratocaster. It's one of the most expensive strats retailing for $2,700. And in my opinion, it's probably the biggest waste of money you could spend on a guitar. Actually, I don't think any Fender is worth buying. Let's get ready for some hate bombing in the comments. Before you leave your comment telling me how I like to pee sitting down, let me first say, if you want to buy a Strat, buy a Strat. I don't care. It's a fine guitar, I just don't like them, and I never have. The first time in 20 years I thought I'd give this widely popular guitar one last chance, my feelings have not changed. Whether you're a Strat stan or someone thinking about buying their first Strat, I'm going to give you five reasons why you might not want to buy it. I figure this American Ultralux Strat loaned to me by Zounds, big shout out to them, would be the best to try because it is one of the most expensive strats they make, has a humbucker at the bridge, stainless steel frets, and an aggressive tapered heel neck, and Floyd Rose trim. What's more iconic to metal than a Floyd Rose? This guitar would have to convince me to change my mind, right? The first reason you shouldn't buy a strat is because of the outdated and basic looking design. I know this is subjective, but I don't find these guitars appealing to look at at all. The overall shape of the body looks bubbly. What is up with the round bit at the end of the headstock? Why is it there? If anything, it just adds extra weight to the end of the headstock. The flared out portion on the high side of the headstock could stand to come in a bit too. I'm not a fan of the pickguard either. It had its place, but in my opinion, it should be gone. And the knobs, in my opinion, they just look cheap. The knobs on this guitar have rubber grips, but it still doesn't change how ugly they are. And I don't like the placement of the input jack at all. It should really be on the side of the guitar to give it a cleaner look. Overall, the design could really stand to be refreshed. This leads me to reason two, the lack of innovation. One of these strats is from 1954, the first year they were manufactured, the other was produced this decade. Nearly 70 years apart and there's not much difference. If you go to the Strat Wikipedia page, a whole lot happened between 1954 and 84, but not much else since. I'm sure people are going to let me know otherwise. I would really like to see them offer models without the pit garden, give more offerings with two humbuckers, and maybe even 24 frets. If they didn't have a pit guard, they could offer some cool figured or natural tops without nearly half of it being covered by the pit guard. And what about a neck through or set neck option? This makes for a good segue to reason number three. They're not original. Yes, Fender designed the strap, but that's not what I mean. I see a guitar as an extension of myself, not only as an instrument, but an expression of who I am. I don't want my guitar to look like every other guitar out there. Not only because so many people buy strats and they've barely changed, but because so many guitars want to look like strats. Just go to Amazon and type in electric guitar. You'll find cheap guitars that are trying to look like strats. As a matter of fact, my first guitar was a 1995-ish PV Predator. What does that look like to you? Maybe that's why I have such a disdain for strats. Reason number four, there are some design aspects of a strat that really affect the playability. The biggest issue is the placement of the volume knob. I get that it's a good place for doing volume roll-offs, but because of that knob, palm muting on the guitar is the worst. I get that guitars weren't palm muting in the 1950s, but they are now. I'm sure you could adjust your technique to get around it, I'm sure Dave Murray has, but I've never had an issue like this with any other guitar. If you plan to play anything heavy on a Strat, just consider where that volume knob is. Another thing that affects the playability is the fret excess. Due to the lower cutout only going to the 21st fret, as well as the neck heel, can make getting to those high frets pretty tough, especially on the lower strings. The heel on this guitar is a bit nicer because it's tapered and contoured, which helps. On a less expensive strat with a squared off heel, the corner on the high side will likely push into your hand, making it slightly uncomfortable. There are a couple more things that affect the playability for me, but may not for other guitars. First are the medium jumbo frets. To me, they feel super short. I prefer jumbo frets, and I've seen some models that offer them, assuming they are actually jumbo frets. The other is the middle pickup. I don't play guitars with a middle pickup, and that is where I tend to pick, so my pick ends up touching that pickup quite a bit. Before I get into the last and probably most important reason, let's get into an ironary mention, quality control. I did see a few small quality issues with this guitar which really bothered me considering it's a $2,700 guitar. These issues could be limited to this guitar, but they should at least be noted. First thing I noticed when I received the guitar was how out of level the trem was. The guitar was flat, assuming it was an E standard, meaning if I tuned it up, it would just pull the strings up further. I tuned it down to D standard and the bridge was still not flat, but I went with it assuming they messed up the setup from the factory. Later on, I was playing around with the trim bar and I heard scratching on the back of the guitar under the trunk cover. After taking the cover off, I realized the actual issue. One spring had come off the claw. 
putting that back on and tuning it back up to E standard, the trem was nice and level. I'm not sure why the spring came off. It could have happened during shipping, but I can't remove the spring just by pulling on it. So I think that's unlikely. I don't think I've ever seen a spring come off a floating trem and the fact that it came off the claw side is odd. For a 2700 guitar, I would expect more. Also, why doesn't the trem cover have slots to adjust the spring tension? Having to take off the cover is short-sighted in my opinion. If those slots were there, I might've caught the spring issue earlier. While looking into the spring issue, I did notice the solder joint on the ground wire on the claw is pretty crappy. More than likely, it won't be an issue because the wire won't be stressed, but I expect better. Another quality issue I found is with the string bar on the headstock. You may have noticed the bar isn't level. That's because the screw on the high side popped out of the screw hole and would not stay threaded in. I screwed the low side in as far as I could without applying too much torque. The high side went down much farther and I'm worried about letting it out because the screw might pop out again. As previously stated, I expect better. The last quality issue is with the finish on the frets. You're right, frets aren't supposed to have finish, but there is residue from the neck finish on the sides of the fret. It isn't on the top of the frets, which is good. Having it on the sides doesn't affect the playability and will come off eventually, but as it starts to come off, it doesn't look great. Again, for a 2700 guitar, I expect better. The fifth and final reason you shouldn't buy a Strat, you can build it cheaper and customized to you. There's a company you might've heard of called Warma. They make replacement guitar parts, but with enough replacement parts, you can build a guitar and you have your pick of guitar shapes as well as woods and finishes. I personally think the Soloist is a better option over a Strat. They're made in the US and I can tell you from the three that I have, their quality is amazing. Let's first see how much this Strat would cost if we built it. The body with the same specs and identical color, 540, neck 407, floyd rose trim and locking nut 257. For the pickups, you can get the double tap humbucker for 119, but instead of buying a set of three ultra noiseless hot pickups for 250, you can buy two individually on eBay for about $75 each, leaving the total pickup cost at $269. From there, we can get our other odds and ends like pick guard, pots, knobs, neck plate, tuners, strap buttons, jacks, screws, etc., for about $170. Throw in a hard shell case for $225 since this guitar comes with one, and you're at a total of about $1870. A total savings of $830. Not too bad. Of course, you'll have to put it together yourself, which really isn't that hard, or you can pay someone a few hundred bucks to put it together. Either way, you're still ahead of the game. This example might be a little extreme since the guitar is so expensive. Let's look at the least expensive American made Strat, the Performer, which retails for $1,400. You could build for around $1,130, saving you $270. Plus you built a guitar yourself. If you get into the lower cost player Strats made in Mexico at $850, you can't really match the price unless you go without a finish on the body and finish it yourself. This would save you about $70. You probably have to go with an oil finish like boiled linseed oil or Danish oil, which I used on this guitar. You could also save about $40 with a roasted maple neck. There is an upcharge for the roasted maple, but you don't have to finish it, which is a bonus for me because I prefer an unfinished neck. But overall, in my opinion, the quality of a Warmoth is at least on par, if not exceeds the Ultra Lux. And if you decide to make your own, you can customize it however you want. Remove the pickguard, get a figured top, move the jack to the side, add dual humbuckers, remove one of the tone controls, moving the volume control down, replace the blade switch with mini toggles, go with a burst or dyed finish, select a cool looking wood with a clear finish, scallop fretboard or different neck and fretboard woods. There's so many possibilities and I prefer to build a guitar that doesn't look like anyone else's and has those customized features I like. Whether or not you believe me, I couldn't care less if you went out and bought a Strat after watching this video. If you are going to buy one, pick one up from Zounds, links in the description. But hey, until next time, rock on.